Hi everybody, we are gonna do a cooking segment this week and talking about turkey, because you know, I realize Thanksgiving's over, but maybe this will hit you in time for Christmas and your Christmas bird. So um, we've got a giant turkey, as you saw in the uh, thumbnail photo. So we've got a 20 pound turkey for two people. Of course, we don't need a 20 pound turkey, but we actually love leftover turkey. And we're gonna show you some of the great things that we do with it uh, after we roast our turkey and enjoy it for Thanksgiving. <laughs> So now that Thanksgiving is over, we want to talk about all those turkey leftovers, right? So we're going to show you on this video and in the accompanying blog that's linked below down in the description, a bunch of different ideas for ways to use up all of those delicious Thanksgiving leftovers so that you don't have to eat Thanksgiving dinner three or four times. So today we're going to start off with a turkey rice casserole. Oh, wait a minute. Cheesy turkey rice casserole because we got to add some cheese to mix up the flavors, right? So it's got a bunch of great ingredients in it things that you'll probably already have on hand, especially leftovers from Thanksgiving. So I've got cheddar cheese and Parmesan cheese, some whipping cream, or you could even use half and half, lemon juice, which we just always have around, butter, salt, olive oil, Worcestershire sauce, breadcrumbs, rice, and now here's the leftover stuff. I've got leftover turkey breast, I've got half of a leftover onion, I've got celery and carrots and some parsley, and even some leftover fresh herbs that we didn't use on the turkey. So we're gonna put all that stuff together to make this delicious turkey casserole. However, the most important ingredient is the turkey stock. So that's what I wanna show you how to make first. So the turkey stock is the most important part of this recipe because it's what's gonna give it the most flavor. Turkey stock is actually really easy to make. You can go super simple, just using just your bones of turkey that are left over, the bones and skin, or you can throw in a bunch of extra stuff to add even more flavor. So what I've been doing is, as I was preparing my Thanksgiving dinner and even cooking a couple of days before, anytime I had any leftover vegetables, like onion, uh, the ends of the onions, onion skins, we had something that had green onions in it, so I just used all the bits and pieces of the green onions, garlic skins, the edges of the celery. So when I cut off the root end of the celery and cut the tips of the celery off, all those things have just been going into a bag, ready to use. So I have the same thing with the carrot peels and just all of my leftover vegetable parts, carrot, celery. Um, if you were doing something like rutabaga or turnips or parsnips, if you were using those in a recipe, those would work. The only things you really don't wanna put in here are potato peels, um, you don't want to use anything that's like a red or green pepper because those will actually add bitterness to your stock. But any of those other vegetables that you're getting ready for and using, you can just throw that all in a bag, keep it ready to go. Then I also, when I was getting my turkey prepped, I used some of my turkey ends and some of the pieces there, like the wing tips, threw those all in the bag, everything was ready to go. Once our turkey was finished and we got all the meat cut off of it, everything went into the crock pot. So I had all those vegetable pieces. Oh, I even had some leftover herbs and things like that that all went in there. So all those vegetable pieces, all of the bones from the turkey carcass that were left over, the drumsticks, the wishing bone, the backbone, all of that stuff all went into the crock pot. And then I just filled it up with water to the top and turned it on last night. So this all happened probably about six or seven o'clock last night after we got everything in the kitchen all cleaned up, I got this started. It was cooking all night last night on high. This morning I got up, I had to add about four more cups of water because it had simmered down substantially. So that uh, I added more water to it, restarted the crock pot so it didn't shut itself off, put it back on high and it's been simmering all day long. And now I've got this delicious turkey stock that is gonna be the basis of several other recipes that I'm gonna use. Now, if you don't have turkey stock ready to go, and I'm gonna run out at some point here real soon in the next few days making these leftovers, but if you don't have turkey stock, of course you can use uh, the box or the canned stuff or even one of the concentrates. It's just, if I've got all these pieces and all these odds and ends, I might as well use it because this is healthier, definitely more delicious, and I can control what's in it, especially the salt. So let's take a look at what this turkey stock looks like. All right, there, you can see how bubbling and good this is. And you can see there's some red onion skins, there's some stems of parsley, and of course all the bones. You can look at the color and you can see this dark color of the stock. It's really kind of a nice amber brown color. In order to use it now, what I'm gonna need to do 
is get rid of all of the bits and pieces, all the chunky stuff. We're just gonna throw that all away and pour all of the liquid, the broth, through a strainer into a container and let it sit. The fats are gonna rise to the top. I'll skim those off and then the broth will be ready to use. All right, so I'm getting ready to start cooking here on this turkey casserole. One of the first steps is to take those fresh vegetables, the carrot, celery, and onion, and to brown them in some butter and oil. Now, if you wanna use up all of your leftovers, here's my turkey stock, and you can see that it's already started to separate. That layer on top, well, that's just butter and rendered fat from the turkey. Um, in Jewish cooking, they call that schmaltz, that rendered fat from the chicken or from the turkey. So I'm just gonna use my uh, turkey baster to take just that layer of fat off and get about two tablespoons, which is what I needed for the recipe of butter and oil. And I'm gonna use that in my pan to saute my vegetables because it's the same difference and it's already got all that flavor imparted in it. So it's just another way of adding another layer of flavor to my leftovers. <laughs> We know that everybody makes turkey sandwiches as part of their Thanksgiving leftovers, but we've got a different take on it that we wanna show you today. So I have my leftover dressing that we used. Um, whatever kind of dressing you happen to make is perfectly fine, whether you do it in the bird, out of the bird, cornbread, oyster, whatever dressing you make, this will work with any of them. So I've got two little waffle irons here. We love these dash waffle irons, the link's down in the description. Uh, they're like 10 bucks a piece. And the thing that's perfect about them is that the size of the waffle is about the same size as a sandwich bun. So I'm gonna take a good size scoop of dressing and kind of smash it down in here. It's maybe a half a cup or so and really press it down in. And do the second thing on the other one. By the way, buy two, because then you can make one sandwich at a time, which is perfect for the timing. It's gonna make a little bit of a mess here getting it started, but that's all right. All right. So we're just gonna let those cook uh, for a minute or two to get nice and toasty and to get heated through because my dressing is still um, cold. Now I also took some leftover cranberry sauce that we had and I heated it up just to make it, uh, take the chill off of it and to get it a little more uh, liquidy. So this is gonna be my sauce on my sandwich. And I've got some smoked Gouda cheese uh, that works really, really well with the turkey flavor. It gives it a little smokiness, gives it some cheesy gooiness just works really well. And then I've got some leftover turkey breast slices. This is an all for one sandwich. Uh, Michelle and I are both having a sandwich, of course. And I've heated this up just to take the chill off of it. The best thing to do would be throw it in a skillet with a little bit of uh, leftover broth uh, or even gravy, just so it doesn't dry out. We heated it up in the microwave for like 45 seconds, again, just to take the chill off and to have it ready to go. So I'm gonna check my sandwich. So these have been cooking for about three or four minutes. I checked them a couple of times, had to add a little bit extra stuffing because they didn't fill up. Once this, they okay. get um, dried out a little bit, they hold together. This stuffing was very moist, so I had to be very careful about making sure, and now this one doesn't want to come out. <laughs> I had to be very careful about making sure that they dried out a little bit. So I'm gonna use my spatula here to loosen up the edges. See if I can dump it out. Come on, Ooh. here it comes. It's hot. There it goes. <laughs> there we go. All right. So I've got the two dressing. Now I'm going to add the cheese right away so that it gets good and melty. This is about maybe an ounce of cheese or so. Again, that's our smoked Gouda. Going to put in some turkey here. And let's see. One good sized slice of turkey seems to be enough. And then a little bit of the cranberry. A lot of people think this is kind of an odd flavor combination, but actually it really works well. The cranberry is delicious with the turkey. That little bit of sweet and tangy with the savory of the dressing. Now I'm gonna take the whole thing and flip it over. And 
Um, I'd love to pick it up and take a bite, but I don't think that's gonna work. <laughs> so uh, should we try it? What do you think? I mean, let's, you're the one on camera. <laughs> let's, let's see what happens. Mm. Yeah. Delicious, but really hot. <laughs> Hey everybody, so we are uh, not having leftover turkey tonight for dinner because sometimes, you know, you have to switch it up a little bit. So we're making some sirloin steaks, but we are gonna use some leftovers and I've got my mashed potatoes left over here. So here's my container of mashed potatoes. Now we, our recipe for mashed potatoes is an old family recipe that comes from Michelle's family called holiday mashed potatoes. Some people call them funeral mashed potatoes, but they've got eggs and sour cream and butter and all kinds of yummy stuff mixed in, spices. So they've already got a ton of flavor and we're gonna turn those into leftovers thanks to Kathy Tor who suggested making potato pancakes with them. So we are gonna do that. Now, all I've done is added to my mashed potatoes. So I took about two cups of mashed potatoes and I added an egg and some half and half and about a half a cup or so of cheese, uh, cheddar cheese, just shredded cheddar. So now I'm gonna take this over here to the pan. I've got my frying pan heated up. You can see it there. And I'm gonna take a scoop of mashed potatoes and just kind of flatten them out into a pancake shape, kind of like latkes there. About a half inch or so thick, and we'll let them fry up on one side to get nice and crusted, and then I'll flip them over on the other side and let's see how they look. So here are our finished potato pancakes. The first one kind of tore up a little bit. We're starting with a sirloin steak and some salad. Absolutely delicious. Now, depending on what you put on these, you could serve them with sour cream, put a little bit of bacon on there since we did cheddar, uh, like a loaded baked potato, or you could serve them more traditionally like a latka and put some applesauce on the side, or maybe even some of that heated up uh, cranberry sauce left over from Thanksgiving dinner too. So thanks, Kathy, for your suggestion, and uh, I'm gonna go enjoy this dinner. How about you, Michelle? Yes. For our chicken fajita soup, we're using some garlic, chilies, and adobo, which you can get on the Latin aisle. Cumin, chili powder, cream cheese, onion, red pepper, and of course, don't forget the turkey. After sauteing everything up, letting it cook down, we're drinking this delicious, creamy chicken fajita soup. modern turkey pot pie recipe is not your grandmother's pot pie. It starts out with a base of fried pancetta and of course has our homemade turkey stock, some paprika, thyme, marsala, and red wine vinegar which are some interesting flavors, and of course mushrooms, onions, parsley, and never forget the garlic. All right, see if you can figure out what we're making this time. We've got some turkey, green onion, white onion, black beans, barbecue sauce, shredded cheese. Yep, you guessed it, it's pulled turkey nachos. Next up, we wanna show you another alternative to just a traditional turkey sandwich. We're gonna be making some turkey bacon pinwheels. So let me move my camera down here so you can see all of my ingredients. Uh, this is one that's also best with white meat. And it's also works really well with kind of all those crumbly little pieces of meat that you don't know what to do with. So we're gonna start out, I'm making this gluten-free, of course. Uh, you don't have to, but this is a gluten-free um, tortilla that we have here. It's from the Siete brand. And uh, we really like these. And of course, uh, 
we need them to be gluten-free, but you could just use a plain old flour tortilla. And I'm gonna start out by spreading um, some kind of room temperature softened out cream cheese. And I'm just spreading that onto the tortillas. Next up, we're gonna add some flavoring to it. If you uh, have some borosin or some nice, uh, like a ranch flavored soft cream cheese, that would be, or a cheese dip, that would work really well. Uh, I'm just using plain cream cheese. So what I'm adding here is some onion powder, some garlic powder. Love that garlic powder there. And a little bit of dill. So just some kind of ranch dressing flavors. We're just sprinkling that right over the cream cheese. I'm gonna flavor my whole sandwich up here. Okay, now next up, I'm gonna add a little bit of turkey. And I uh, took this out of the fridge and heated it up in the microwave for just a couple of seconds to get the chill off of it too. Um, I don't really want it ice cold. Now, we're gonna add a little bit of cheddar cheese to this one. I've got some blue cheese crumbles that I'm adding to this one. You use any kind of cheese you want it or uh, no extra cheese at all if you don't want it. Got a little bit of both there. And the last thing, I said these were bacon turkey. So we're gonna add some bacon bits here. Of course, you could also just add fresh bacon if you have leftover bacon. Whoever has leftover bacon? What? I don't even know what that is. All right. Now, hopefully I worked fast enough that I can kind of roll these up and then use that cream cheese to just kind of press it all together. Well, that worked well. Good. Fold this one up. Anything falls out, just, just tuck it back in there, right? Nobody will notice. Okay, and you could serve them just like that, or you could cut them into little bite-sized pieces. some bacon turkey roll-ups. Make sure you check out the blog that's linked below in the description for some more recipes that didn't make the video. And as always, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and give us a thumbs up down below.